you know, most of our wellness is made up from having a healthy gut. You living with celiac disease, you'd be the first person to say that how terrible you feel when your gut is not in balance. So... Welcome to the Healthy Celiac Show. I'm your host, Belinda Whelan from belindawhelan.com. And here you will learn to live your very best life with celiac disease. So we are going to be talking all about health related topics because you, my friend, are more than just a woman with celiac disease. Be sure to hit that subscribe button so that you don't miss an episode and welcome to the show. What I do want to share because I don't think enough of this is being spoken about, is how to naturally boost your immune system. But the thing is, when it comes to our health, we can also boost our health naturally. Now, I'm not saying that if you have a really great immune system that you're not going to get a virus or you're not going to get the flu or you're not going to get sick, but it can help you to stay healthier And if you do get any of those nasty colds or flus or viruses, it may not be as severe as what it would have been if you were unhealthy and not looking after your immune system. I hope that makes sense. So as a holistic health coach, I want to give you some really simple tips that you can take on board to help you boost yours and your family's immunity. So I just want to cover my butt here and say that in this episode, this is not intended to treat, cure, diagnose, or prevent any diseases or medical condition. It is purely for your informational purposes, and it is recommended that the listener seek professional medical support in anything moving forward. But this is just to share with you some really great tips that may or may not boost your immune system. They may help you, they may not, but they're not going to do anything bad to you. They're going to support you in a positive way, if anything. So let's jump straight into number one. And the first one is my favorite, getting enough sleep. Now, (laughs) you've heard me talk about sleep a few times on the Healthy Celiac podcast, but I truly believe that when we get a good night's sleep, it has this amazing effect on the rest of our body. But the thing is, when we have a good restorative sleep at night, what happens is that's when our body does its healing. That's when our body has time to rest and rejuvenate. So if we don't get enough sleep, then obviously our body doesn't have time to function at its peak performance. So please make sure that you're getting as much sleep as your body needs. And we are all different. I need way more sleep than my husband. And it seems at the moment I need way more sleep than my two little kids. But anyway, (laughs) so getting a really good night's sleep can really help with the way that you feel and the way that your immune system is better at fighting off illnesses. So definitely aim to get as much sleep as your body needs. I'm not going to give you an exact number of hours because like I said, we are all different. Now, you know, whether that means you go to bed earlier or you just try and have a better night's sleep by doing, you know, certain things that can help you sleep better, getting off your phone earlier at night, you know, going to bed and reading a book instead of staring at a screen. There's lots of different things. We won't um, get too bogged down on those details. I just wanted to give you these tips really quickly. Now, the next one is to eat more whole plant food. So more real food. So getting you know, a really broad diet of fruits and veggies and nuts and seeds and things like that that are full of nutrients and antioxidants to help you, you know, fight against any harmful, you know, pathogens that might come your way. Now, the great thing about having lots of antioxidants in your food is it helps to decrease inflammation. And we were talking about that recently on another couple of episodes. So you can go back and listen to episode 23 and episode 21, where I'm talking about foods that inflame your body and can also um, be anti-inflammatory. So definitely go back and have a listen to those. I'll put a link below in the show notes for you to um, go back and listen to those ones. So The thing is, with inflammation in your body, it can actually lead to your body being overly stressed, and that's where we can become ill. So when we eat more of those, you know, anti-inflammatory foods, then that helps with that side of things. And obviously eating 
the you know fantastic whole foods you're going to have more of the goodness in your diet that you need so you know the great antioxidants the fiber the vitamin c all of those things that can help support you now the next one is eating healthy fats and again these can be anti-inflammatory and can help you with fighting off anything that comes your way that you don't need in your body (laughs) so yeah definitely Adding in healthy fats can help support you as well. Um, And the thing is, when we talk about chronic inflammation within the body, it certainly does suppress your immune system. So these fats can basically, you know, combat those illnesses and help support that. So definitely want to be looking at eating some healthy fats. Now, the next one is to add in a probiotic supplement or to be having more foods that are fermented so that you're getting those probiotics into your diet. Because when we talk about that balance of having a healthy gut, you know, most of our wellness is made up from having a healthy gut. You living with celiac disease, you'd be the first person to say that how terrible you feel when your gut is not in balance. So if you make sure that you're eating a um you know, a diet that's rich in fermented foods or taking a probiotic supplement, it can really help with having, you know, a good gut bacteria. So definitely one to look into if you're not already doing at the moment. All right, the next one is to look at uh, basically getting a moderate amount of exercise. Now, I'm not talking about a lot of crazy exercise because you wouldn't believe it, but when we exercise too much, we actually put more stress on our body and it can actually make us become more run down. So getting in a moderate amount of exercise can help us drastically. It's definitely highly, highly recommended for all over health for sure. All right, the next one is to stay hydrated. Now, when we are dehydrated, we can actually become unwell much quicker. So it's very important to stay hydrated. And when I'm talking hydrated, I'm talking with water. I'm not talking just drinking any old drink, juices and energy drinks, cups of tea, things like that. I'm talking about clean, pure water. It's totally the best way to go to look after your body. All right. The next one is to limit in the added sugars that you have in your diet. Now, you would have heard me talk about having packaged gluten-free food in other episodes. And unfortunately, a lot of packaged gluten-free food is really high in added sugars. So I recommend you have a look at what you're consuming and see how much sugar is in this packaged food if you're eating a lot of them. Um, but if if you're not having a lot of packaged foods and you don't add sugar to too much, then you're probably doing quite well with that. But see, the thing is, with sugar, it can actually contribute to other health issues such as you know having obesity or type 2 diabetes and even heart disease. So these things can all suppress your immune system. So it's very important to lower the amount of sugar that you have and therefore the inflammation in your body. All right. So the next one, Woo! this is a fun one. Manage your stress levels. How are we going with that at the moment? This is probably not the easiest time in our life to be talking about managing our stress level is it? Like, I don't know about you, but I don't think I've ever been so stressed in my life. I'm finding that dealing with everything that's been going on around the world is really taxing on my stress. It's really, um, I think it's just getting me bogged down as far as, you know, what are we going to be doing tomorrow? What are we going to be doing next week? You know, I've had holidays that we've had to plan. Uh, sorry, had to cancel after we've made plans. You know, we can't go visit our family and friends that are interstate. We can't go to the shops freely and, you know, smile at people anymore because we're covered in a mask. So these types of things are drastically increasing the amount of stress on our lives. And, you know, that's only touching the surface. You know, people are losing jobs. People, you know, are financially struggling. There's all of these things. So when we talk about managing our stress, we really, really need to get on top of it. And I've been personally meditating at night. I've downloaded an app where I listen to meditations and that's been helping me a lot. So 
there may be something that you need to do um, in order to manage your stress levels. Another thing that I've been doing is doing daily gratitude again and writing down in my gratitude book things that I'm grateful for each day so that I can focus on those things rather than all of these awful events that are going on around the world at the moment. So if you need support with that, please make sure you reach out to someone because we do need to talk about these things. We need to make sure that everyone is okay because, you know, it's not okay to bottle it all up and think that, you know, these people are worse off than you because you are important and what you're dealing with is is valid, okay? It's important that you talk about your needs and what's going on for you. So please make sure that you're managing your stress levels as best as possible because it does help keep you well. And we're talking, you know, mentally and physically. It makes such a difference when you are stressed to how your body overall feels. So very, very important. All right. And then the next one is to supplement as well. So I am a big lover of supplements. I do truly believe that our our food is not grown the same way it used to be. I don't even know if I've discussed this on an episode yet, but basically the way food is grown these days, it's harvested so quickly and the dirt's a re the dirt that the food is grown in is how ha- is reused so quickly that it doesn't have enough time to get nutrients in it. And if you know anything about our fruits and veggies, the nutrients actually come from the dirt. They come from the earth. So when the nutrients aren't able to be put back into the dirt, then those fruits and vegetables no longer have as much goodness or flavor in them. So this is where I truly believe that unless you're growing all of your own food or eating fully organic food, then it's important to also boost what you're eating with supplements. But as far as an overall you know, looking at eating healthy and eating well and and continuing to be well, I highly recommend that everyone does take a vitamin C supplement. This, you would have, I don't know if if this is just me, (laughs) but growing up as a kid, we were always given vitamin C tablets over winter. That was just mum's thing. We had vitamin C chewable supplements and that helped us during the winter months. I don't remember getting sick very often as a kid. And even these days, it's not very often, touch wood, it's not very often that anyone in our family comes down with a cold or a flu, which is wonderful. The next one is vitamin D. So vitamin D deficiency can definitely increase your risk of getting sick. So vitamin D we actually can get from sunlight. So your best form of getting vitamin D is to get out and get into the sunshine. But the thing is, if you're in a place where it's currently winter, it is hard to do that. And that's why it's always a great idea to take a vitamin D supplement in the winter months, because it's a little bit harder to get that from our sunshine. So definitely worth looking into a vitamin D supplement. The next one is zinc. So zinc can actually reduce your risk of getting a cold by 33%, which is pretty huge when you think about it. So definitely worth looking into. And then there's other areas of, um, you know, that you can look into such as echinacea and garlic. You know, there's studies, there's lots of information that you can look into the benefits of those. Um, There's supplements that I know that you can get that combines the echinacea and the garlic. So you might want to look at one of those, or you might want to be crazy like my brother and just chow down whole cloves of garlic. That's fun for his girlfriend. Uh, (laughs) So yeah, you know, these, these things we can do one way or the other. I personally prefer to just cook with my garlic and get a lot of garlic into my, my, diet that way. Um, So yeah, do what works for you. If you don't like garlic, it's definitely worth looking into a garlic supplement because they work really well as well. And the very last one is very simple and I'm assuming we've all been doing it and it's to focus on our hygiene. Never ever before have we had such a major um, focus on the way we wash our hands, the way we cover our sneezes, not touch our face. It is really important because it is so true that when we, you know, transfer germs to our body from our hands, we get sick. That's that's just the way it is. So the more hygienic you are, the less chance you have got of getting sick for sure. So definitely keep focusing on washing your hands and covering your sneezes and 
all of those different tips that you would have heard a million times over the past probably year and a half, if not longer now. I think it is. Yeah, it's probably a bit longer than a year and a half. So I hope these tips are going to help you focus on boosting your immune system. And it may not, you know, it may or may not help you be less scared, I guess, of getting sick because I want you to live your life and I want you to be happy and I want you to be healthy. And I don't feel that enough people are sharing this information because I truly believe that our immune system is our first fight of defense. And, you know, obviously people are getting sick and it's going to happen, but there's some families that seem to get sick. And we, let, let's just say we're just talking about colds and flus here. We're not talking about some particular virus. We're just talking about colds and flus in general. You look at one family, never get sick. You know, they go whole winter and no one in their family gets sick. And then you look at another family and they get sick all the time. The kids get sick, the mum gets sick, the dad gets sick, they pass it around. And what's usually the difference is what they're eating their routines as far as when they eat, their sleeping patterns, all of the things that I've talked about in today's episode, you'll usually find that that is the main contributing factor between the two families of who gets sick and who doesn't get sick as often. So definitely something to think about. Please take these tips on board. Absolutely love to hear your feedback or anything that you're going to change or take on board awesome if it's all 10. That's wonderful. It may be a bit of a stretch for some of you to do all that straight away, but yeah, definitely reach out to me and let me know what you think because I always love hearing from you guys. I really appreciate it. And if you would like to keep in touch and be part of my community, I do send out a weekly newsletter. So jump on to belindawhelan.com and join up to my community and you will get a free ebook when you do so and be part of that weekly newsletter and find out when every new episode is released. So until next week, stay healthy, be well, and I look forward to talking to you soon. Bye. If you enjoyed this episode, head to BelindaWhelan.com to get yourself a free copy of my exclusive ebook, 11 Mistakes People Make Going Gluten-Free Living With Celiac Disease. 